everyone. So today we are looking at lead code number 62. It's called Unique Paths. And this is a classic dynamic programming problem that really focuses on a method called tabulation. And once we kind of understand this, we can actually solve this quite quickly. Um, but the way you want to think about this is uh, you want to create a table and then fill in certain elements, certain initial elements into that table, and then you can figure out all the values for the rest of your table based off of those initial elements. That's kind of how you want to get a mental model around around these types of problems. So uh, let's take a look at the prompt here. Robot is located at the top left corner of an M by N grid. The robot can either move uh, down or right at any point in time and the robot is trying to reach the bottom right of the corner of the grid, mark finish, how many possible unique paths are there? So here we have uh, our first example. The input is M, and it's 3, and it's a grid of 3 by 7. And there are 28 different ways you can get to finish if that robot is moving uh, right or down. OK, so let's, let's kind of take a look at a conceptual overview of this. So let's say our input is, let's start small. And let's say our input is um, it's something simple like three three by three. Okay, so we have m equals three, and n equals three. So we have a very simple three by three grid. Okay, so we'll do one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three. Okay, so what we want to do here is with any of these types of problems, we want to figure out what are some initial values we can fill in to this grid, and can we figure out the rest of the values based off of those initial values as we iterate over the grid. So let's think about it. This is where we need to get to, and what, what, what are ways we can move? Well, we can move right, we can move across, or we can move down. So those are two initial values. We know that one path will be going all the way right and one path can go all the way down so we can actually fill those in we can just fill those in with a one that is one way we can get to one way we can move and we can move all the way down now once we have these initial values filled in is there a way to calculate the rest of the grid based off of these initial values so let's think about it if we're trying to get here what are the different paths we can take well we can take one right and get here or we can take one down and get get over here. So there's two different ways. Fill that in. That's two right there. And if we look here, another way to think about this is if we take this one here and we take this one and we just add those together, we're going to get two here. Now, we don't need to figure out the rest of the ways how to get to this cell right here. We know there's two different ways to get to this cell and there's one way to get to this cell. Okay? So now what we can do is that this cell right over here is just going to be the sum of 2 and 1, which is going to be 3. So again, we know that there's two ways to get to this cell, and there's one way to get to this cell, so this cell will be three ways. It will be the sum of 2 and 3. And again, we can just fill out the entire grid just based off of that, that simple principle. So here, this will be 3, and then this will be 6. And 6, of course, is the correct answer. So it's, once we kind of understand that basic concept, it's actually not too bad, okay? So coding it up, let's go ahead and, and move over here to the code. So what we want to do first is just create our grid. Const table, and we can just do um, array.from. We'll do a length of m, and then we'll fill in each one of the rows with a new array of a length of n. And all we're doing here is we just go ahead and go ahead and creating that that 2 by 2 array right here, our grid. Okay, so now what next thing we want to do is we want to fill in the initial values. So we can just iterate over uh, over, over our grid. So for let i equals 0, i is less than table dot length i plus plus. And then we just want to fill in that initial value on that table. So we can do table of i at 0 is going to equal 1. And then here we can do for let i equals 0. i is less than table of 0 dot length i plus plus. And then we can do table of 
uh, 0 at index i is going to equal 1. Okay, so all we've done here is we've just gone ahead, gone ahead and filled in the ones here and filled in the ones uh, on the column as well. And so now we iterate over this 2D grid for let i equals 1, i is less than table.length. And we're starting at 1 because we already filled in that initial value. So we can start at 1. We can start at this point right there. So table.length, um, i++. plus plus. Okay, for let j equals 1, j is less than table of i dot length, j plus plus. And now we are here, we just want to fill in this value, which is just a sum of the cell above and the cell to the left of it. So we can just do table of i, j is going to equal table of i minus 1, j, plus table of i, j minus 1. And then we just go ahead and return the very last element in our table, n minus 1, and table of n minus 1. OK, and that's it. It's not too bad. I think the, the main thing is when you come across these problems, try to think of a grid or a table and what are initial values you can fill in to that table. And can you move through that? Can you iterate through the table and use the values that are already in there to fill out the rest of them? That's the key way to look at these dynamic, uh, so dynamic programming problems. And they become a lot easier. And as you can see, there's not a lot of code. But you do want to make sure you think through all of this um, because it is easy to make mistakes. But once you kind of get, once you kind of have an understanding of what you want to do, uh, you can see that there's actually not that much code that you have to write. Uh, so that is Leap Code number 62. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you on the next one.